everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and woo, I got something for you tonight that is going to kind of lift your spirits, I hope. We've got Sean Hannity here saying the DOJ Inspector General FISA abuse probe is done, and it's devastating. Okay, this article on the Washington Examiner talks about that, and of course, you know, they're talking about all that is going to be coming out when this FISA report comes out from the Inspector General, and supposedly it is done. Now, I've heard before Joe de Genova was talking about it, and he speaks as if it's done as well. Now, don't get your hopes up that it's coming out this week, okay? Because I've got something that I think may give it more impetus when it does come out. It's going to really be a beautifully played chess move, in my opinion. And that's why it's checkmate for the president. I think he's got something up his sleeve. This guy is a master chess player. And this is a chess move to end all chess moves, I think. So follow along with me here. Good old Sundance here on the conservative treehouse says declassification directive possible next week. Well, on her television show, Laura Ingram reported her sources inform her President Trump will execute the declassification directive next week. If accurate, the timing in advance of the OIG report makes sense. Well, let's look at the video first. Here is the text of it. This was from Methods, and this is the text, and then here's the video. We hear tonight, I heard today from a high place White House source that the president it may be looking to um, release and uh, declassify all the relevant documents leading up to the start of the Russia probe next week. But he's going to, but I heard he's going to give them to Attorney General Barr uh, to review. Well, I've been hearing that for a long time. Well, apparently and, it's next week. Well, that's that, what my source tells me. That'll be interesting. So I'm not sure who her source is, but it's a high-placed White House source. So could be very interesting. I do think maybe the timing is going to be right because of Sean Hannity also saying basically the same thing here. So I do think it's done. Like I said, De Genova also in a couple of interviews, two different times, I've heard him say that it was done or mention things that indicate he knows that it's done. He said that Inspector General Horowitz had already said the last three times that the FISA warrant for Carter Page were renewed were illegally done. Okay, those last three times were illegal. And he was looking into whether the first time was or not. So that indicates to me that DeGenova has an inside source telling him the status of that too because remember he did work with a lot of these people and so he has connections in there with Horowitz's team I'm sure and so he said that in a couple of interviews on Fox and then you have this from Sean Hannity and you have then from Laura Ingram and so I think probably that's what's going to happen now look what Sundance has to say here the, the declassification of documents central to previous congressional inquiry that also encompasses the inspector general review of the Carter Page FISA application is the subject of great interest and speculation however it would make sense for President Trump to authorize the declassification of documents in advance of the IG report release now this is where I think this is a masterful chess move on Trump's part, okay? I think this is something that's going to give President Trump checkmate. I really do. He is going to checkmate all the rest of them because I think he's going to get out ahead of the media. Now, I want you to think back for just a little bit to what it was like when the Mueller report first was released, if you want to say it that way, and it was given to Barr. And then all of the media hullabaloo that, oh, it's going to say bad things. And then Barr came out and said, no, it doesn't. You know, it says that Trump did not have any collusion with Russians and that, you know, he's free and clear of that. Well, then they latched on to the only thing they could, which was the obstruction. And then they're trying to say, well, you know, we don't have the full report. We got to have the full report. And what, within a couple of weeks, Barr produced that. 
and it had very few redactions in it. And now they're trying to claim that what's under the redactions is what's really going to be the story. And that's the real truth that's going to just take everything down, you know, and Trump's just going to go down in flames because of it. <sighs> well, you know, that's their pipe dream, but it's not going to happen. And so if you think now to how this is going to come out, okay, if this inspector general report is going to be very bad, which is what Hannity said, it's going to be devastating. And uh, De Genova also gave some indication of that because, like I said, he already said the last three FISA warrants for Carter Page were illegal. Okay, they were illegally obtained. So now there's just the decision about that first one. Was the first one illegally obtained? And I believe that it will be found that, yes, it was because... The dossier was totally bogus. If they come out with this IG report, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to be a similar type thing to what we had happen with the Mueller report. Until, you know, we know what's under the redactions and things, the media and the Democrats are just going to go at it and they're going to puff all this up in people's minds. They'll make things up because remember, that's how the wrap-up smear works. That's the tactic that Nancy Pelosi talked about. And I'm having a little trouble right now with my video because it's still not up to par. I haven't quite swapped out the hard drive yet. I have to do that tomorrow. So right now my program, my editing program isn't working correctly. So I can't do like titles or overlays. I can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> and I'm kind of doing it blind because it doesn't give me a little review panel. So I'm... Um, I'm just going on audio. So if the picture doesn't look quite right, I apologize for that. But I'm trying my best. I, I'll get it tomorrow. Hopefully it'll be back up and running decently again. Uh, I hope. <laughs> so it's a little frustrating when that's what you do is make videos and your video program doesn't work. So anyway, um, there is a video that I did on Nancy Pelosi. It's called Pelosi and the Wrap-Up Smear Tactic. And so um, I'll try to remember to put the link to that down below in the description with the links to all of these articles that I'm going to talk about, because that tactic is the way that the Democrats have smeared a lot of people. And we saw it really obviously with Judge Kavanaugh, Justice Kavanaugh now. And, you know, that's how they did it. They make up a lie. They tell it to the press or leak it to the press. But it's really telling them because the press is on their side. And then the press turns around and then they publish a story about it and people read it. And then the Democrats point to it and say, see, it's in the press. So it's got to be true. Right. And that's how they use it to do this circular reasoning type thing to support this fake story that they make up. And so all they need is for that report to be released and then they can start making up all their fake stories again, just like they did with the Mueller report. Well, what happens though, if Trump declassifies these documents ahead of time and guess what? Horowitz then could include them in his report. Imagine that. Yeah, wouldn't that be something interesting if that were happening? Yep, 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 that would be fun. And so, you know, there's a lot of people that have to go in with it if they do that. There's a procedure here in this article by Sundance, and this was put out January 29th, and it goes through the specific steps as to how that would happen. You know, and of course, we're all expecting there to be litigation after it. Probably. I don't know if these things are declassified and everybody can see them. It's going to take a lot of wind out of their sails. They're just not going to be able to fight against it when it obviously says what it obviously says. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be pretty plain to everybody, anybody who actually reads it. It's not going to be like the Mueller report. The Mueller report was written by people who didn't like Trump. This is going to be written by someone who is impartial and who is actually going to write about what the truth is and what really happened. So it's going to be very interesting. Here are some of the things that are being asked for. Here's another list if you want to see that. This was a list he put out April 28th, and it has a little more details on each one of the items. Again, I'll put the links down below. I'm not going to go through all of them. But this this list right here is one of the basic lists. And I think that's the same as was in the statement by the press secretary, you know, Sarah Sanders. 
and she made this statement about it. And here are the things. This was back September 17th of 2018. This is what Trump declassified at that time. But then, of course, you know, like I said, the officials from Great Britain and Australia called him up and said, hey, don't do that. <laughs> so it didn't go through. But part of the reason it didn't go through was because of the whole process that has to be found out and followed. So if you go through this, I thought this was a really good article. This is the one on what he has to do. Now, if he does this, remember, this was back in January that he said this. I think it'll be different if he declassifies the stuff and then the IG report comes out. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be huge. He couldn't declassify any of it before the Mueller investigation was finished. That had to be put out first because if he did, that was going to be called obstruction of justice. And so he did not, he did not declassify any of it. And he let it go, and then they got the report, they finished the report, they put it out. Now he can declassify this, and the IG report can come out. So if the IG report includes some of these documents, it's going to be very obvious, because you're going to have all the Carter Page applications, uh, you're going to have the Bruce Orr 302s. The 302s, remember, are the... Um, summaries of when they interrogate people, when they talk to people, they write it down in a summary and that's what the 302 is. Like they had a 302 on Flynn immediately afterwards that said he didn't lie. And then, of course, what, six months later, all of a sudden there's another 302. And so, yeah, that and the Gang of Eight's going to play a very important part in this. And the Gang of Eight, in case you don't remember who all is part of that, let's go down here and look at the Gang of Eight. There's a picture of them. So, yeah, this is the Gang of Eight right here. We've got McCarthy, Pelosi, McConnell, Schumer, Nunes, Schiff, Burr, and Warner. Okay, does it kind of give you an idea why maybe Burr is so interested in getting Don Jr. in there? I think he did relent on that uh, subpoena, though, right? But um, he's still going to have him in there for questions. But yeah, these guys, how many of them are going to be in trouble? Well, I'm pretty sure this one, this one, this one, this one. I think he's going to be in trouble. And this one, yeah, I think Burr. He's a Republican, but I think he's going to be in trouble. So we'll see. But Warner for sure. Yeah, they're all going to be in trouble. And they're the Gang of Eight. So they are allowed to have these classified reports. And if you follow the procedure in this article that talks about the part two, the presidential um, procedure here, it, it goes through the actual procedure and how... You know, basically Trump will say, I want a meeting about these documents. And he tells Dan Coates that Dan Coates puts the meeting together. He says, I want it at this time. He selects a date for this briefing and informs the office of the director of national intelligence, Dan Coates. And he says, this is what I want to have. And then they show up and sure enough, there are eight to be 18 printed copies of the PDB, the presidential daily briefing. Uh, assembled and secured for the briefing and then he brings in the gang of eight and they're part of it and after the briefing while remaining in closed and classified section session the full and comprehensive content of this collective intelligence product will be discussed with the full assembly of the u.s legislative branch intelligence oversight known as the gang of eight and that's what they are considered so they are the representatives for the others. They have the clearance to be able to see that stuff. And so you have John Bolton, who's going to be talking to them. This is what Sundance says might happen, would probably be the procedure. Okay. And so then after you have that, they are invited to that. They come in, they're given the information about all of this you know, these documents and what he wants to do with them, that he wants to declassify them. And then here's what 
Sundance says should happen. The president, no one else, only the president, then collects the printed portfolios as they were distributed to the participants, exits a briefing, and walks directly into the press briefing room within the White House, handing each of the awaiting 12 members of the national media a copy of the briefing material to be published on behalf of the American people. Done. Litigation begins. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that's how it's going to happen, but that could be. I don't know. You never know with Trump. He kind of surprises us sometimes. Now, something that uh, the article pointed out that I thought was kind of unusual. First of all, he had this about Mark Meadows. This is from April 13th. He's had from Ar Mark Meadows saying, I.G. Horowitz has interviewed Cortan and Pienka and three others that the Congress didn't get to interview. Now, Cortan he has been fired. Well, okay, technically he has been, he quit. Okay, I put that in quotation marks. <laughs> Can't you see my fingers? Um, yeah, those are in quotation, it's in quotation marks. He quit, and that's probably how it is officially, but yeah, he didn't have a whole lot of choice. Um, Cortan, he was the former FBI assistant director for public affairs. Yeah, he was part of the leakers. And so he was one of them. By the way, these are all different people that are have been removed from the FBI and the DOJ. Quite a list, actually. Anyway, uh, something in Pienka here. I've done a couple of videos about Pienka. Pienka was one of the FBI agents that was there with Peter Strzok when he was interviewing Mike Flynn. And so he was a witness to what Flynn said. And he has been unusually silent. I mean, he's kind of somebody very few people know anything about. So Pianka, if you want to know more about that, I'll try again to put the link down below. There is a video. There's two videos on him, I believe, and three others that it didn't mention who they were. And uh, yeah, that was something that was unusual because Congress had not been able to interview those two, especially. And you would kind of think that those would be two important people to talk to. But again, you know, the Republicans just couldn't get to everybody before they lost power in the House. And then here's something. Also, Trump has never read any documents related to declassification. I'm not sure I believe this. OK, he says that probably he hasn't because then it would have interfered with the um, Mueller investigation. And I guess that's possible, but I do think Trump knows some of this stuff. I mean, I think he knows what's in these documents. I think he knows who did what. All right. I think that's part of it. And that's why he wants to declassify them. And yes, it's not going to happen overnight when they do this. If he declassifies, like, say, tomorrow, which he could, you know, it's Friday. It's going to be the 17th. Who knows what he's going to do? That'd be a great thing for him to do. Even when they say that Horowitz's report is coming out, there's still going to be a little bit of time. It may be up to a month before it can be released totally. If you remember back to when his report was released in June of last year, um, it was the same kind of thing. It comes out in a review format. And the review then is, you know, the people that are involved in that aspect of things will have a chance to go through it and to look through it and make sure that there's nothing that should be kept, you know, like national security issues or things like that. And so it will have to go through that process and everything. And then after that, you know, that's usually about a month's worth of time. So again, don't expect Horowitz's report to be out next week. I don't think it's going to be possible because I I haven't heard that it's officially in the review stage yet. It could be, and I just don't know about it, but I haven't heard yet. And I think that would be a big deal if it was. So when that happens, then, you know, you can kind of guess that it's going to be three to four weeks before we're going to actually see it. And at that point, then we can start really looking. So, um, 
you know, here again is some of the documents and I will put this article down below because it gives good information in case you don't know what documents we're looking for. But there's going to be several of them. And when we're looking on here, you know, if AG Barr supports the declassification request, there would be limited room for any intelligence unit to justify blocking the release. In recent reporting, Bill Barr has been outlined in discussions with the CIA and ODNI during his own intelligence review. It, it is almost certain that those media reports are referencing contact and discussion about the IG report and declassification content. So in other words, they've already been talking about it. I would be willing to bet that Barr has already been on it. And, you know, that that's something that he's really, you know, expecting to already take action on. The ODNI, remember, is the office of the Director of National Intelligence, who is Dan Coates is in charge of the executive declassification process overall, which could be an issue because I don't think Dan Coates, I'm not sure he's a pro-Trump person. Okay, I hate to say that because he's from Indiana, but I uh, kind of am thinking he's a swamp creature, but I'm not going to say 100%, but it's kind of looking like it right now. The ODNI is the intelligence hub that all requests and approvals flow through. If any intelligence unit or compartment has an argument against declassification, their argument justification against release or redaction removal is made to the ODNI. The DOJ is one intelligence agency within the process. However, in this specific example, the declassification directive will be targeted to fulfill the DOJ OIG investigative framework of the inspector general, assuming this is the goal of President Trump, which I assume that is what his goal is. Therefore, the DOJ will have increased weight and responsibility for coordination and support for the declassification request. If all cabinet members of the executive branch are working full, toward full transparency and assuming the current FBI doesn't try to block any release, the process for declassification follows normal guidelines to notify any intelligence units that might be impacted by public release. In this example, again, assuming the list of classified documents is similar to those previously anticipated, which I just showed you, uh, there are possible foreign governments and intelligence units that would need advanced notification. In turn, those foreign agencies may request time to organize their intelligence interests and impacts. I think they already have been because they know Trump is planning on, you know, releasing these. He really is. And so, of course, the ODNI Dan Coates would be responsible for working with Department of State, which is Pompeo, CIA, which is Haspel, FBI, Ray, DOJ, NSD, Barr, and NSA, which is Nakasone right now. Each of those intelligence officers are then responsible for notifying their foreign counterpart of any information that might pertain to their interests. Assuming the declassification touches on foreign interests, which we already know that there are some officials from at least Great Britain and Australia who are involved. And I saw something today that might indicate somebody from Germany. So that could be interesting, too. If everyone within the executive agrees, then likely Inspector General Michael Horowitz will be allowed to outline the declassified content in the main body of his report and not hidden within a classified index unavailable to the public, which is what happened in the report in June, where, like I said, you had that appendix at the end and it just said classified documents, you know, and had nothing in it, nothing that we could see. And so this would allow him to put that in his report, which would be fantastic because we know all this stuff is going to show that they are guilty. That's how it's going to work. If the declassified material extends beyond the interests of the executive, in this case it likely does, then the ODNI may select participating intelligence members to brief the Congressional Gang of Eight on the material being declassified. Would you like to be a little fly in the room when these people right here these eight start hearing about it. Now, McCarthy and Nunes, they already know. And uh, McConnell, I'm sure, too, knows what's going on. But I'm not so sure he's 100% squeaky, squeaky clean either. <laughs> so, um, But these two doing a good job. And they're going to be holding their own while these guys gonna be in trouble <laughs> oh i'd love to see their faces when all this starts coming down they're gonna fight against it obviously they're gonna be fighting not to declassify this stuff because they know if the public sees it their name is gonna be mud 
Oh, it's all going to come out the truth. If the declassified material extends beyond the interests of the executive and the legislative, in this case, it is possible vis-a-vis -vis FISA, then the ODNI may also brief the chair and ranking members of the House and Senate Judiciary Committees on the material being declassified. In other words, hey, Jerry Nadler, Doug Collins, Lindsey Graham, and Diane Feinstein. Ooh, this is going to get fun. <laughs> Uh, additionally, there's also possibility the full Carter Page FISA application is being declassified, and I believe it is. I believe that's on the list of things that are going to be declassified. Now, on Trump's statement here, he only listed certain pages, uh, pages 10 to 12 and 17 to 34 of the June 27, 2017 application to the FISA court in the matter of Carter W. Page. So that's what it was there, but... It could be the whole thing, you know? I think Trump has had it. <laughs> I really do. And I think he's going to declassify absolutely everything he can because he's tired of their lies. So am I. I'm tired of the lies. And I just want to see the truth, the full truth that was going on. Additionally, there's also possibility the full Carter Page FISA application is being declassified. If so, there could be notification to the U.S. Judicial Branch, SCOTUS Chief Justice John Roberts, who I think is going to be in some deep do when all this comes out, too, because, you know, he's the guy in charge of the FISA court. And, and or FISA court presiding Judge Rosemary Collier. I think she's going to be in deep do, too. I mean, seriously, they should have questioned some of the things that were in that FISA warrant. And especially since each time it was renewed, there were three times it was renewed. And each time there was supposed to be some extra information, some something that kept it going. But there wasn't. I mean, this was basically the only information was the dossier. And the dossier has been shown to be totally debunked, totally a bunch of hooey. So... I think she's going to be in trouble, to be honest. So you can see this is a rather engaged and lengthy process as each participating interest is notified and allowed time to provide feedback if they have any adverse interests to the release, which may need to be considered. This is not as simple as President Trump saying do it. A declassification request is a process. So I wanted to let you know that. So it's not going to come out next week. <laughs> but we could see the declassification request. And if that happens then we can kind of set a little bit of a timer for about three to four weeks and we should get the you know, full document, the full IG report by then. So it's coming, coming quickly. And so anyway, then it goes on a little bit more here and about unilateral declassification, which, you know, if Trump's in a meeting with somebody, he can't say, oh, no, wait a minute, I have to run out and ask if I can tell you this. <laughs> you know, you can't do that when you're negotiating with foreign powers and stuff. He, he, they, we rely on the president to have a brain and to know what things he can talk about, what things he can't, and to declassify on the spot if he has to. So anyway, again, here's another list of the things, but this one doesn't tell much about it. But remember, the document here on this one gives you more information about each one and links so you can see about that. So it's really good content. This is an excellent article here. He did a lot on this. So, yeah, that was in September of 2018 is when the statement came out by Sarah Sanders about the declassification here, September 17th. And these were the items, but there have been more items added to the list that I'm pretty sure will be included. And here's where he said, Mark Meadows outlined President Trump has never seen the documents or the information that would be contained within the documents. And that was this article that I showed you back here. But I tend to think Trump at least knows what's in there. All right. He's got some people that are helping him out, and I'm pretty sure that they have given him a heads up, at least some of the items that are there. And, you know, the guy has been following what's been, what we've seen, too, at least. And so I'm sure he has seen a lot of these text messages from Struck and Page, you know. But he's really trusting the system, and he's got some people that are helping him. And, you know, especially that one particular letter, the alphabet, the 17th letter. And so... 
you know, it's going to work out. It's just that he may or may not know. According to Mark Meadows, he says he doesn't think he knows any of it. Well, I think he's got an idea of what's in there. That's just my opinion. Uh, so this goes on and they say, you know, the conservative treehouse doesn't traffic in hope porn. Well, I don't want it to be hope porn, but you know, these are the things they hope will be class declassified. And this is kind of a revision of that other article. So, you know, you can go through that. And then he goes on and he talks about, you know, it's doubtful the intelligence apparatus would ever permit the public to see the 99 page FISA opinion written by the FISA court presiding judge, Rosemary Collier. It would be too damaging to the objective of future FISA authorization. Yeah, kind of sad. We probably will not get to see that, but boy, wouldn't you want to see it? 99 pages. That's really interesting. And of course, you know, the Kavalek email and notes, we're waiting to see if we can get those. That would be really good too, but maybe those are part of, you know, the IG report. And so the if Laura Ingram is correct, the principal draft review phase for the Inspector General report may soon be coming. The draft review allows each of the people identified within the report to the opportunity to submit any response or counter to the information as presented by the reference check phase. And they must sign an NDA before they see it. And so, you know, non-disclosure agreement. So they can't talk about it and, you know, can't say what's in it or anything. Uh, it'll be good. And... It'll be interesting. The IG may choose to include responses from the principals in the draft report, or the IG may not. Some of that depends on the advice of the person or group who fulfilled the reference check. Usually, if the IG adds the principal comment, the IG will rebut the comment with additional information and citation. That could be interesting, too. And so once we hear about the draft report, media will mention it perhaps next week. It will be around a month to full public release of the final report that everyone will see. And here's that quote that the video from Laura Ingram about it. And a few more down here, very interesting articles as well. So that's what I've got for you on this one. I think it's going to be fun. And I think it's a brilliant chess move. Because if he can get this out, the whole thing is declassified, or at least the major parts of it, so the information is obvious to anyone who reads it in the American public, it's going to really turn the tide of things. Because it's going to be so obvious that this is not a political ploy by Trump, that he is not doing it just to attack political opponents. It's going to be something that will be obvious to everyone that these people tried to do a hit job and they tried to undermine the will of the people and to subvert a duly elected president. So this is going to be exciting. Things are really starting to happen, but unfortunately still, it's going to take a while. So yeah, we may hear something big you know, that it's in the review stage or that President Trump declassifies things, but it's still going to take about a month for the actual report to come out. So don't expect to see it until June sometime at least. Anyway, that's what I've got on this one. I hope you found it interesting and all the links will be down below because these are really good articles, folks. So make sure that you check them out. And hopefully the next time you hear my voice, <laughs> it'll be with everything back up and running. But it's going to take me a while. You know, once you get the hard drive replaced, then you got to reinstall everything. And so that'll be fun. Uh, but hopefully it'll all be up and running by the next video that I do. Yay! Because this has been, it's kind of a type of handicap here. And it's, it's really tough doing things blindfolded when you're editing videos. So, but anyway, so thanks for sticking with me and everything and keep watching my subscription number because it just keeps going up and down. I lost 30 some one day, I think <laughs> just recently. So it's just been fun to watch it go up and down. Oh, and I wanted to mention this. I'm going to put a link down below. The White House has put out a survey 
for anyone who has had problems with their social media because of their conservative comments. So if in any way you've had comments like taken down off of Twitter or Facebook or whatever the case is, any social media, Instagram, whatever, you need to fill out that survey and make sure that you send it around to everybody you can think of because they're gathering information about how social media has been censoring conservatives. And they're collecting the data and that's going to hopefully make something major happen. So whew, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? So instead of me having a whole bunch of comments and a bunch of likes and then zero views, maybe it'll actually report my views correctly. <laughs> I can only hope and it'll stop taking subscribers away from me just for no reason whatsoever. <sighs> you know, if people legitimately want to unsubscribe from me, that's fine. But I just don't think it's happening in reality. I think it's being manufactured. <laughs> so anyway, <sighs> Just wanted to say thanks for stopping by and I will see you all later.